These are the beautiful shores of the Faroe Islands, 200 miles north off the coast of Scotland. These lands have many parallels to the idyllic landscape of my home country. Two weeks ago, these shallow waters turned crimson red with the blood of 150 pilot whales. The mammals were forced onto the beachhead, where they are met by hunters who wade into the sea armed with hooks, knives, rope and spinal lances. The hooks are forced into the blowholes, essential airways for the whale to breathe. Then the whale has plunged the spinal lance through its back, severing the spinal cord. The hooks are attached to the rope, the rope is pulled and the pilot whales are dragged onto shore. Some may argue it's to put food on the table, others hold on tightly to the notion of culture. But from a country filled with hospitable locals and natural habitat, it's difficult to understand any justification of the centuries-old tradition of the brutal slaying known as the Grinderup. Recorded whaling in the Faroes dates back to 1584. The whale meat and blubber once provided much needed food and oil for an island struggling to survive in the harsh climates of the North Atlantic Ocean. The locals would use rowboats to herd the whales toward their shores and villagers would then use the only methods available to kill then butcher the mammals in their quest for survival. Survival. Something I believe most of us can have some understanding of. It has been part of evolution since the Earth began. I visited these shores last year. It was a brief encounter, but one I had to find an understanding for. To me, whaling sits in the same field as bullfighting, fox hunting, the ivory trade, and anything else we, as humans, have decided to be fair game. The Faroe Islands is a progressive country both feet firmly set in the 21st century. Right now, I could be sitting in any stadium in the first world. Grocery stores in every village, local and traded produce lining the shelves. Culture is a priority. A proud nation inviting tourists from every continent to visit its splendor. One organization decided to seek change, to document, to witness, to show the world what occurs here on this island during the summer months. This is a great vantage point for you, right? And one of the greatest, yeah, because it's inside of the house. Mm -hmm. We've got a, a, a very good view about the three, uh, three main... Entrances. There are 23 kill beaches on the island where the grin can take place. On this year's campaign, Sea Shepherd only have the resources to cover a small percentage of them. We wake up at like 4, 4.30, try to leave the house at 5. It takes us about an hour to get here. Then we spend the day and then get about four hours of sleep and so then start like over again. So that's like a 15 hour day. 15 hours at out least, here in the yes. cold. Yes. This is one of the many killing beaches on the Faroes. The last piece of ocean the pilot whales will ever swim in again. But their view will not be as peaceful or as beautiful as this. Grab the tools, run down the beach, um, and this will just be covered. Covered with, you know, anywhere between, I don't know, 20 to 500. It's usually around the 200 mark. Um, but this whole place would just be, if you can imagine that, you know, 200 pilot whales, all massive, you know, beautiful, beautiful mammals just there and you would see it it's crazy to me uh, and all of this would be you know claret red with blood and the beach would be stained with blood and you'd have locals out here just kind of walking around watching it uh, some of the kids dancing in the water with it um, almost like a ritual you know it's hard to get your head around so I offered open dialogue 
a chance for anyone to vocalize their opinions and to show me their truths. So what is it about the grin for you? Does, does, uh, are your family involved with it? I mean, do you have brothers? Do you have a, you know, yeah. does your dad go out? Yes, we have a boat, so, so um, often they're in the boat or at the beach right. at the moment. So. And, and how, do you, how do you feel about it? How do you feel? Have you seen them? I mean, you've watched it, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and what, is it, what is it for you? What does it stir up? Any feelings or emotions? Or? Mm, I just think it's beautiful to watch. I... Um, a beautiful how? Are you talking I, about like the colors? Are you talking yeah, about the colors and it's like the sea is red and the grass is very green and so it's the matching colors and I think it's, I think it's beautiful. Because it's our nationality tradition. Sure. So, so it's something you were it, raised with? Yeah. Now let me ask you, if it went away, mm -hmm. how would you feel? And be honest, I mean, would you be devastated? I wouldn't be devastated, but I think it's sad that some people who are not raised or have any relations to the Fair Islands should come here and t tell us that we shouldn't do this. Because uh, I just think this is what what we what should be here. It it should be. It should stay. And I don't. Yeah. Would you be disappointed if it wasn't here for, you know, come the time when you get married and have kids? <laughs> right? Which is a long way off probably. Mm. But I mean, will you be disappointed that your children can't have this as yeah. part of their tradition? Yeah. Why is that? Do you know? Um, because I was raised with it. And I want my kids to be raised with it. In truth, I found a nation who outside of the Grind seemed to live a harmonious lifestyle and a progressive existence. A land that is holding on to an outdated practice which they seem petrified of letting go. I came supporting the organization Sea Shepherd. Sea Shepherd have maintained a presence on these islands since the mid 80s. Some have viewed their tactics as aggressive and extreme, something I myself have yet to witness. Nonetheless, I came wearing my own colors and taking a seat on the proverbial fence. The conflict of these two opposing sides has boiled over in the past, something I decided to help somewhat eradicate. Unfortunately, each side has pushed the other to a place where dialogue seems futile. The press conference was an outstretched hand from Sea Shepherd to allow local press to ask anything regarding their latest campaign, a hand that was rejected in a seemingly loud and clear statement. The islands fall under Danish rule. Danish law forbids whaling around its shores, yet the Faroese have held on to part of their independence and whaling on their shores is as legal as it has been since the land was founded. These are laws to be upheld on the Faroe Isles. If tourists um, spot any pods of whales, they have to immediately inform the local police. Um, it appeared that these laws were not being publicized to the masses. No one I asked had any knowledge of the law that could put any tourist in jeopardy. And I don't know if how that's... You, how, how would they you, know that yeah. you... Yeah. Well, that's what I would think, but I also don't know how, you know, how they're going to let us know. I mean, I just found out from them. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Unless there's a sign yeah. at a point like this where there's... You or can at the airport, the a sign that says something. Yeah. yeah. But it's like, or it's crazy. Stamping stamp so. in your passport or something. Right. And I began to wonder how these laws could be held up for those who came to whale watch. I am wondering if there are any whale tours um, in the Faroe Isles. No, there are no whale tours organized here. So there's no like whale watching? No. The locals have great fondness for their domestic animals. The dogs are healthy and loved. Many enjoy a life with their horses. Yet yeah, there seems to be a complete disconnect, a desensitization when it comes to the pilot whale. Some, however, make no secret of the fact that it can also be served as a delicacy in the capital. It's the first restaurant I've been in that it's on the menu. <clears throat>
Finding well meat on the menu was a shock for me. It made me fear even more that there is a demand in the country for Grin to be served. It pushed me to do what I could to help end these hunts that can be called within minutes. We were on guard daily, and when the phone rang, we could only hope for the best. You have to keep your eyes on a pot the whole time. As long as you guys say there's no activity in the harbor, no increased traffic, then and the fog is rolling in, that's, that, that's good. We had a few false alarms, a few heart-pounding moments that eventually appeared to be nothing more than a group of fishermen heading out to trawl. But elsewhere on the island, such phone calls are met with a very different effect. When two opinions fail to convince or find a common ground, there's bound to be conflict. 2014, to present a more humane discussion. Local whalers who actually killed the whales had to be certified and gain a license. Oh, okay, so you're one of the guys that can actually do that. Yes, because you need, a, legal, you need this legal. certificate. Yes, no, I know all about this. And how long's a course? Two hours. It's a two hour course. Yeah. So I could go and do that tomorrow yeah. if I wanted and get one of these things. Yeah. Been involved in the Grinch your entire life. Yeah. Because that's a thing everybody's raised with, it, right? I mean, yeah. Yeah. presumably. And I, I, I've always been interested because. When, when you are a kid, when yeah. you're in school, yeah. maybe there is a whale hunt or sure. slaughtering. Yeah. Everybody in the school will run to the beach. Do you do you hunt anything else or is it just a whale? No. Just whale. I don't hunt the whale. We, we don't hunt whales. So you don't go out and no. get the whales? No. We don't send ships to go and look for whales. Right. So, but so but describe that whales, to me. We, yeah. If we see the whales yeah. swimming somewhere near the islands, yeah. we send some boats to catch the whales. It's so not like hunting. Want. I mean, it's not like hunting. I mean, coercing them. Let's say coercing. Coercing is a nicer word of saying you go and tell something to, hey, come here, there's no way out. Correct? Oh, that's it. We have Thank you. We have oh, that's it. You're done, huh? I, I thought we were having a great chat. So, so what happens as soon as I start getting a point across, you're done. I understand. No, no, we have a schedule. All right, it's nice meeting you. Thanks for stopping. Likewise. Have a nice oh, well, enjoy, your, enjoy your trip. Thanks for saying Thank you. Very good morning. Thanks, man. I love that you enjoy it. Food source, tradition, rite of passage, a gift from God. Journey here was to find a satisfying answer that I could maybe understand. Because, like most, the only evidence I've witnessed has been on YouTube videos that certainly highlight the grind as a brutal slaughter. To be honest, I don't think there's a lot of the older generation that would even sit down with us. The younger generation, I think there's a chance to sit down and say, listen, going forward, maybe the, maybe it can change. It's but almost like a habit, isn't it? I it, mean, it's, it it's is. almost like, a, a, like an addiction. Exactly. And we're trying to tell them to stop. It's, yeah. it, and I think the older people, and I've met very, 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 very beautiful various people that says, I hate the grin. But they will never say it out loud because they will get ostracized. People sure. will just kicked them out of the community and we, we've got such a guy, he lives in Denmark now, he used to live on the Sudroy Islands and um, he, sp he spoke out against the grid, um, but more um, in closed groups towards us and then he said well he wants to like really really talk out against it but he needs to get his house sold first. Wow. And Because um, it could affect the sale of the house yes, I mean, if yes. it's really that strong. Here. Yeah it is and then he started speaking out it when the moment his house was sold and he lives in Denmark now. Um, he, he started speaking out against it, especially on ferry his side. And he says, listen guys, this is, we don't need to do this anymore. And we met him at the ferry on our way here. He helped us with something. And um, he said, he, he got a message this, just like two, two, three days before he met us, to say he shouldn't come home this, this summer. He, he should have friend. Yeah. He, sh he, should, he just shouldn't even come to the Faroe Islands. So even though there are people here that might not agree with it, they won't speak up. My last day in the Faroes, the 29th of June 2015. My day consisted mostly of last minute interviews, B-roll footage and preparation for a long flight home. Then I got the call. I said, all right, oh, okay.
through all of my conversations and my own research, I was starting to lean heavily towards the notion that the grin no longer had to do with nutritional survival. It no longer served as a logistic passage of rice, and it really did start to sound more and more convincingly that it was a form of an aggressive blood sport. Twenty-three pilot whales were herded onto the banks of a quiet shore. The mammals panicked as they and the generations of family beside them were lanced, pulled and ultimately hacked to death. Before their demise they had been swimming freely and unknowingly in waters that have no human laws to protect them from the whalers who feel nothing towards a species that is literally screaming and splashing and trying with every fiber in its body to break free of the horror that is now in front of them. The sad thing is, they don't stand any chance at all. Something I would uh, never really imagine that I'd see. Desensitization. This is where it starts. The younger generation has seen or is beginning to see the rest of the world. I know that they hold on to their family's belief that the Grindarap is a part of their heritage, a part of their nation, a part of them. But once they truly see that this movement is not a personal attack, not a shining light on the Faroese as a whole, but rather a call to put both feet firmly in the 21st century, I have faith that they will choose to leave the Grindarap in the historical archives that it deserves to be. But until then, Sea Shepherd will continue to document and be a presence, and no law can stop the voice of the world. What I see is a group of individuals who are trying to make a difference. Individuals who give up their time, their wage, their comfort, to stop what I can see is nothing other than illegal violence. I am now one of the few outsiders who has witnessed the Grindr up, and after all this time, I finally have my answer. It's not just as the bull ring, but it's still, it's still, uh, you, you're killing an animal, you're showing that I'm a real man, and look at me. If 
you have been to Brim, yeah. then uh, you're, uh, it's, it's very manly. I came here ready to see a land of carnage, a land on edge ready to throw themselves into a war of sorts against those who come here to question their culture. And what I found is the truth to the question I was afraid to hear, something that most wouldn't admit to a journalist, but perhaps felt more comfortable talking with me. Who knows? But what I do know is that the definition of being a man is not this, surely. And until the day that they see that this is no longer of service, then the presence of Sea Shepherd will remain by their sides.